you think about what you see. And if you are like me, sometimes, sometimes our thinking is off. Okay, y'all don't want to admit that. Oh, no, not mine. Yeah, yours. Because sometimes of how you view things, you operate based on your view of it, even if it's not right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it has largely to do with the amount of trauma that you have endured. It is based on your past experiences in life that really shape your perception of your current situation. Okay, let me try it this way. For a woman who has been, uh, let me say, for a woman who has been molested or raped by a man with a black uh, turtleneck on and a black hat and a black skull cap and a black turtleneck hat, uh, on and black jeans and black boots, if she encounter someone dressed like that, immediately there is something in her that is alarmed because her perception is based on her history. And the last time I was in close corners with somebody like this, this happened to me. So now everybody that dresses like that alerts me because of my experience. Many of us are still living through the vestiges of trauma from years ago. We are still looking through life through the lenses of what we have endured. And consequently, hear this, it hinders us from having healthy relationships and cultivating healthy friendships in our present. Because every time we get to this point, there is always something there to remind us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm trying not to go that deep on it, but um, something there to remind us, to remind us that this looks too much like the past. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the challenges of people who have been married before and now um, going into a second marriage. Uh, and I try to help people with this is that you've got to make sure that you are healed from your first experience. Because if not, you will indict the next person for what the last person has done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's some things that all people do. It's not, they're not doing it against you. They just, all people do it. But if you associate it with the negativity of your past experience, now you're indicting him or her for something him or her did before. Right. Amen. And the reality is, it's just human behavior. There are certain things that all women do. Mm -hmm. All women get on your nerves at some point. Uh, uh, oh, Y'all don't want to talk about this. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lord, I've lost y'all. I've lost you. Let me get you back. And I don't care. I don't care. Some of you men, some of you men are just chumps. Y'all looking straight like, mm, I can't say nothing. The camera might be on me, you know. <laughs> and it don't matter. So you can't make the new girl be responsible for what the old girl did when all the girls do this. All of them got a tendency to rap, 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 rap. I mean, yeah. Oh, I better turn this around really quick. Let me <laughs> All dudes, all men, all of them feel entitled and don't want to do stuff you ask them to do. They slow at taking out the trash. They, they slow at fixing things around the house. 
you done asked them 10 times. They done walked past the same thing. And they done left it and still ain't fixed it yet. And then when you call somebody, they offended. <laughs> you can't hold the present one to the sins of the past one when they all got the same sin. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to understand that your perception will mess up your reality and you will live under a false reality and have expectations of people and situations that are not fair because I have to understand and come to grips with the fact that how I see my situation determines how I handle my situation. Lord, I wish I could talk to y'all. How you see your situation determines how you handle your situation. If you see the glass, this is from the uh, psychological uh, analysis, if you see the glass half empty, that same glass is half full. Mm -hmm. If the water comes up to the halfway mark of the glass, and you say, well, it's half empty. It means that you have a negative perception of what's in the glass. Consequently, you devalue what's in the glass. Oh, indicting what's in the glass for what's not in the glass. Just keep looking straight, but how many of you have mishandled and devalued and disrespected what you have? Because you can't get past what you don't have. Instead of having, instead of, it, it, it is, it is, it is the way of looking at money. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't have 10, I had $10. But now I have five dollars. I can either say I ain't got no money because I had ten dollars. Now I only have five. Or I can say I'm not broke. I still have 50% left. Oh, I wish. It's how you perceive it. And the, what the Lord is trying to tell you and I tonight is that I'm trying to get you to change your perception of your reality. Because if you do not, you will pray and ask amiss. You will pray and your prayers will not be handed, ha uh, 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 answered because you don't have faith enough to believe that what you have is enough to get you where you need to be. I discovered something through some experiences in my life that if I lose everything and still have Jesus, I have enough to start all over again. Uh, if I lose my job, if I lose my family, if I lose my friends, if I lose my car, uh, it's not the only car God ever had made. I wish I could talk to you. If I lose my house, it's not the last house in the world. Oh, God. You got to live so in, in this state that we're in, especially now. I know why God now has told me to tell you this, because in this pandemic and post-pandemic world, um, while COVID is lifting and people are not dying at the rate that they were and people are not being infected at the rate that they were, it has left, though, it has left some things upon us. Psychologically and emotionally, people are still... Uh, um, uh, still in a pandemic. People are still trying to gather themselves and try to come up to come to terms with how to function in this new world because um, there is paranoia, there is fear, and fear has torment. And when you are tormented, you cannot operate clearly you can't think clearly you can't move clearly because fear has torment and fear will cause you to be 
uh, to see things that are not even there. Fear will cause you to believe that you're going to die just because you have a sniffle. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Fear, fear is dangerous because fear will have you with a headache and thinking you're um, um, threatening an aneurysm because of fear. But God has not given us the spirit, help me hear somebody, the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I need you to put your hand on your head and say, Lord, keep my mind. Uh, I need my mind. Anybody here? I need my mind because the, the, the battleground for my life is my mind. And if the truth be told, it is not what you are dealing with externally that's really your fight. The fight is in your head. Mm. If I could clear my mind mm, of negativity, if I could clear my mind of frustration, if I could clear my mind of worry, oh God. If I could clear my mind of anger, I could live a little better because when I clear that stuff out of me, I start saying what God's word says. Stuff like, by his stripes, I am healed. When you clear your mind, you'll start being able to speak what God's word says. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand and it shall not come nigh thee. I need you to put your hand on your head one more time and say, Lord, help me clear my mind. I got, I got to clear my mind of this stuff so I can speak and say what you say. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You said no good thing was I would hold hey, from them who walks up right before me. You said if I delight myself in you, you would give me the desires of my heart. You said that in the midst of a famine, you would make a way for your people. You said, oh God, that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And if I could get my mind right, I could start believing that my child still has a chance to be saved. Let them smoke all they want to smoke. I'm a living witness. Let them run all they want to run. Let them do whatever they think they're big enough to do. But if God made you a promise and you get your mind right and you start agreeing with what God said in his word huh, you're going to see the fulfillment of God's word in your life now, now let me just tell you this it takes faith somebody shout faith it takes faith and it takes um, an incredible amount of intestinal fortitude to reject the negative. Now, I know y'all save and deep and spooky and all that other stuff, but let me tell you something. It takes faith. Oh, this ain't for no punks, y'all. I'm sorry. We'll say that. This is not for the faint of heart. Let me say it like that. Um, it, it, you, it takes something on the inside uh, to reject the negativity that you see on the outside. That's easy for you to say, Pastor. You got this and you got that and you are here. You passed that. It's easy for you to say, no, 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 no. Let me just go ahead and testify. There have been some days where I crawled up in the bed and didn't open the blinds. <laughs> Hallelujah. And two, 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon my breath is still stinking uh, y'all don't want to talk about this uh, I ain't took no shower I'm still laying in the bed depressed uh, and fearful and wondering what in the world is going on in my life I know you don't have those issues but I know what it is <laughs> amen to lose days because of fear and lose time because of um, because of frustration and lose time because I don't know what God is doing and I don't know where my life is I know what it is <laughs> I know what it is to wrestle emotionally through things and stuff you can't even tell nobody I know what this is but I also know <laughs> what it is for God to somehow peek through the darkness and I, I discovered this he ain't always got to bring you out of anything sometimes he just needs to peek in the room and say Psst, 
I'm here. I'm in the house. When you come out of that bed, guess what? I'm going to be out here. Sometimes God will let you lay there and have your own pity party until you decide, I'm going to get up and get myself to gay. Yes, Lord. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I need to tell somebody it's time for you to wash your face. It's time for you to brush your teeth. It's time for you to go to your closet and get all the way dressed up in your spirit. Where you're going? Nowhere. I'm just taking charge of my life again. I will not lay here and language in anger language in trauma the devil is a liar he that the son set free is free indeed hey hey yes lord at some point you got to make up in your mind i shall not die but i'm going to live can we just take a pause for a minute and just tell your neighbor neighbor i just changed my mind this will not kill me uh, I'm almost there I need you to open up your mouth and let the devil and his mother-in-law hear you shout in here and shout online this will not kill me not gonna kill me not gonna kill me I may cry but I'm not gonna quit I'm almost there, I promise you. I'm, uh, I, may, I may hurt, but I'm not going to give in. If I got to limp, I'm limping the victory. If I got to hop, I'm hopping out of this, this humility, or rather, this horrific situation. Either way, I'm getting out of this. I am not going to stay here because it doesn't look like... Woo, it doesn't look like uh, what it is. So, so, this scenario, and I've got to hasten on, but this scenario is quite interesting to me because Jesus uh, is accosted by Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, and he comes to him and he says, Jesus, I got a situation that's a 911. Uh, they didn't have ambulances in that time, and so Jesus is the paramedic and the specialist. And so Jesus is accosted. Uh, Pastor Peterson, he's accosted, and um, uh, the man says to him, my daughter is sick. She's sick and she's low and I need you to come. Jesus says, I'm going to come now. He gets up and they're on their way. But he is interrupted and intersected by a woman with a 12 year issue and this woman's issue is as important to her as J. Arius's issue I've learned here's the lesson I've learned not to be impatient and insensitive to other people's issues because you don't know how they feel about what they are dealing with Oh, wish I could talk. And so the Bible says that this woman does not intend to interrupt Jesus. It was her faith that interrupted Jesus. She says, I don't need to have a conversation. I don't even have, need to have an audience with him. If I may just touch the him Y'all know the lesson, the hem of his garment. In other words, all I need to do is touch something that's touching him. Oh, God. Uh, all I need to do is touch something that's touching him. I'm going to ask the believers a question tonight. If somebody touches you, would they be connected to Jesus? Do you have enough faith that if somebody ask you to pray for them? Do they have enough confidence? Do you have enough faith to believe that God can use you to speak a word of healing? Oh, God. And the Bible says that she touched him with the hem of his, her garment. She touched the hem of his garment. Jesus stops and says, somebody touch me. You know the scenario the text says. Uh, they said to him, all these church folks said, listen, everybody's here. Everybody touching you. He said, no, no. This was a different touch. This was a different touch. This touch touched me. Uh, okay, y'all, let me try it again. This touch touched me. Mm -hmm. Y'all, the rest of the folk touched me, but they didn't touch me. 
Mm -hmm. um, they sang, but they didn't touch me. <laughs> they danced, but they didn't touch me. They went to church, but they didn't touch me. They were bu busy having a fashion show uh, and performing for likes uh, and for people to applaud their... No, no, no. Uh, this touch touched me uh, in such a way till it took something out of me. I know, I know kingdom life, I get on your nerves. I know I do. Yeah. Uh, but I ain't trying to get on your nerves. I'm trying to get on your spirit. Yeah. Because we cannot afford to come together. Yeah. And you rolling your eyes up in your head and don't want to clap. Yeah. And don't want to praise them. And don't want to do that. You don't understand. It's not for my uh, appeasement. This is not to appease my ego. Huh. I'm trying to get you to touch him. And every time somebody touched him, they did something. You can't be cool, calm, and collected and touch Jesus. Okay, y'all don't y'all need some Bible. I'm gonna give you some. Bartimaeus is sitting by the road. He is blind. He says, Listen, I don't know which way he's coming. And I don't have time to get in my feelings. He said, No, 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 no. I'm gonna holler till he hears me Jesus Jesus thou son of David he kept calling him till he touched him oh. uh, that's why the songwriter said reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by uh, uh, so this quiet church uh, this conservative uh, it don't take all of that kind of attitude uh, it's not really conducive and convenient uh, for the sanctified uh, oh, I'm sorry uh, it, ain't, it ain't conducive for this environment uh, you need some more Bible I'll give you some uh, Zacchaeus said listen I just want to see him uh, so I got to do something uh, to make sure that I get a chance to see him and he climbs up a slick tree he puts his shoulder in it to make sure that when Jesus walks past Jesus has to look up and see the effort that Zacchaeus made just to see him okay let me try a little this way, Zacchaeus said, "I didn't. I don't. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to get his number. I just want to see him. Because if I see him, the deal will be made." Oh God, I need you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, from now on, you may not want to sit next to me. From now on, you may not want to be around me because I need something from God that requires something from me. And I'd rather look stupid and let you roll your eyes and laugh at me how I to demonstrate uh, and express my faith to God uh, than to keep walking out of here uh, without my miracle. Uh, I'm sorry, it's half time uh, and God promised me some things uh, and he got six months to prove himself uh, and I need to come out of this locker room uh, with a different kind of praise. I need to come back on the court huh, with a different kind of energy. Huh. Church, let me tell you something. Huh. We done stayed it through the first six months. Huh. We done slid through the first six months. Huh. But as, as intense as your pressure has been, huh, as intense as your trouble has been, huh, you ought to make your praise, huh. you ought to make your prayer huh, as intense huh, as your pressure huh, and turn your pressure Hey, yes, sir. Look at your name and tell him he coming, he coming. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. I say, I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, he coming. You, that's the wrong neighbor. I need you to turn to the right neighbor. Up, oh, he coming. And I got to make sure that I'm a I got another more I got to make sure that he sees me. I got to make sure that he hears me. I got to make sure that I get his attention. So, and so it is, so it is, so it is. Be seated, be seated. I'm almost there. I promise you, I'm almost there. I feel him. <laughs> yeah, he's coming in the room now. Thank you. 
And so the Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, that Jairus now is waiting patiently. He's patiently waiting by. And while he is standing patiently waiting for Jesus to fulfill his request, he gets interrupted by some disappointing news. I sat you down because I want you to hear this and I don't want you through the emotional celebration of it to miss this point I want to ask you a question in this room and online have you ever been waiting for God to do something that he promised and in the midst of your waiting you get some disappointing news oh I don't have the right church. Have you ever been uh, waiting on God and you know you have the witness of his presence and you have the witness uh, in your spirit that he's going to do it? It's been prophesied to you. It's been spoken over your life. And in the middle of that, your life gets interrupted with some disappointing news. What do you do, mom, when you've been praying about something and in the middle of it, you get disappointed? I know you wouldn't shout on this, but is there anybody beside me know what it is oh, to be disappointed? Uh, uh, I know what it is to be disappointed. God, how in the world could I be believing you for this? And this happened in the middle of my waiting. You told me to have patience and wait, and I'm doing it. Now, here comes, uh, here comes one of the fellas telling me, I'm sorry to report to you, but your daughter is dead. Uh, so unless you want Jesus uh, to preach the eulogy, uh, I'm not sure that you need uh, him to come. Hmm. Uh, in other words, cancel your faith. Cancel your belief in him. Because uh, what you were hoping that he would do uh, has now been undone. Uh, and you are disappointed because you wanted him to come. And heal your daughter. Well, she's dead. Don't trouble the master any further. But the text says in verse 36 that Jesus arrested his fear. I said he arrested it. Okay, I'm going to try it again. He arrested the fear in Jairus. He arrested his fear. He wasn't cute with it. He said, well, man, I'm, um, if, you, um, if you can kind of still believe, um, you know, man, you know, we can work something. No, no, no. Jesus grabbed his fear in the collar and said, before this thing sets in, he says, don't be afraid. I just need you to believe. Uh, I know uh, fear sets in. And I know disappointment is setting in. Uh, and I know anger is setting in. And bitterness is setting in. And frustration is setting in. Uh, but God told me to tell somebody in this room, uh, only believe. I got to get out of here. He said, only believe. Now, that seems pretty simple. It's simple until you have to call Paul Simmons to come and pick up the body. Uh, only believe. Um, the morticians are coming. Only believe. That don't make no sense. Believe for what? But God has a way. Let me tell you what I found out God would do. Sometimes God will. A uh, sin, <laughs> oh God, anesthesia, <laughs> spiritual anesthesia <laughs> to your situation <laughs> and does not let you feel the impact. So sometimes your enemies think, <laughs> hallelujah, that they have done their job. Uh, or they feel like they have not done. Uh, but they don't understand that, that the peace of God, he, uh, la, ba, shanta, uh, that passes all understanding, uh, knows how to arrest your heart and your mind. Uh, when sometimes, okay, y'all don't want to preach with me, let me preach. Uh, and let me tell y'all, and let me see if I got a witness here. Uh, you you should have been crazy. 
based on the things you went through. You should be somewhere psychologically disconnected from reality of even what day it is. But you know what happened? He let peace jump in front of you. And when the enemy wanted to take your mind and the peace of God which passes all understanding. I know y'all don't want to admit it but give somebody a high five and tell them I know I look like I'm together tonight. Oh my God, but if you knew how close I was uh, to a breakdown. If you knew how close I was to taking that last pill and getting rid of my life. Oh God. If you knew how close I was to taking that car and closing my eyes. I know what it is to get on 26 and close my eyes and say Lord whatever happens just happens. Oh, but I praise him because I'm standing here tonight because thou will keep them hey, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed hey uh, uh, look at your neighbor and tell him I almost lost it but he restored me I almost gave it up but he snatched me back I almost threw in the towel but he threw the towel back and when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Lord, I feel you coming. Let me hear. Let me go on here. And so the Bible says, uh, Jesus says to him, be not afraid, only believe. He gets to the house and notice now what he sees in the house. Everybody is weeping and wailing. Everybody is weeping and wailing. Everybody is weeping and wailing. They're not just, amen, tears are not just trickling down their face, but they are openly sobbing. They are wailing. He walks into an environment where there is no faith. He's walking into an environment, oh God, I thank you, where nobody is believing for anything to change. He's walking into an environment of the stokes where they are weeping and wailing. And Jesus asks a crazy question. What's wrong with y'all? What in the world are you doing? What is all this commotion for? I thought when I read it, I said, God, this is so insensitive. How can Jesus be so insensitive? And then I thought about my assignment as a pastor. Sometimes I struggle. Hear this. Uh, Tracy, I struggle sometimes uh, because when I need to speak to you uh, and speak to y'all in a way, uh, I fight with my own human heart uh, and I want to soften things uh, and I want to be sensitive. Uh, uh, but God told me, he said, listen, uh, your job is not to be sensitive. Uh, sometimes you got to shock people. Uh, back into their place of faith. All that cuddling don't mean nothing because the devil ain't cuddling you. Demons ain't cuddling you. I'm sorry, y'all ain't gonna like this. Demons ain't cuddling you. Sometimes you got to get violent in the spirit. But since the days of John the Baptist, thank you, Lord, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. If I see you on your way down, I can't be standing there talking about, I hope you come back. I don't want to offend you, but I need you. I don't need you to jump off the cliff. I'm sorry. If you love me, and you see me going over the cliff. Uh, I don't need you to be standing there talking about, uh, uh, ain't nothing I can do now. No, no, no. If you love me, I need you to holler. Oh, Lord. If I walk out of here and, and walk out in 601 traffic and a tractor trailer is running down the road and I ain't paying attention, I don't need the saint standing on the sidewalk talking about, I hope he move. I hope he don't, I hope he don't get hit. I'm going to hope that somebody go holler and say, hey, man, get your crazy self out the middle. Oh, God. Jesus did the same thing. He said, listen, I ain't got time to be cute with y'all. I'm trying to do something here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's trying to do something in your life. Now let him do it. 
Oh God, y'all ain't preaching. <laughs> you ain't talking to the right neighbor. Look at the right neighbor. <laughs> said, did you hear what I said? <laughs> Let him do it. <laughs> Bible says that Jesus said to them, what's wrong with y'all? Why this commotion? The daughter is not dead. Notice he said she's not dead. This is a strange thing. Jesus said she's not dead. But death is the end of life. In the realm of human existence, death is the finality of human expression and interaction. Death is the end on this side of what we call life. And Jesus said she's not dead. How in the world can you declare she's not dead? The, um, the, um, the coroner has already been called in. They have already signed the death, um, you know, the, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that thing. They signed it. They timed her out. She's got a toe tag on her right big toe. And they have already now, amen, identified her as dead. The only thing left for her to do huh, is to be embalmed. And in this time, huh, there was no embalmment. Huh, and so they were just waiting for the parents to come in. Huh, and then they are going to put her in the ground. Huh, they're going to wrap her up in sheets. Huh, they're going to wrap her up and dump her huh, into the burial place huh, because she is dead. And the Bible says that Jesus says she's not dead. How can Jesus declare that she's not dead when I'm looking at a dead girl? How can, how can, yeah Lord, Jesus says she's alive when she is dead dead. The heart is not beating. The blood has stopped flowing. There is no brain activity. There is no mobility in her being. But yet Jesus said she is not dead. How many things have you pronounced dead in your life? How many situations have you accepted the prognosis of the enemy? How many, how many, how many things have you said are over and is never going to come back? and never even heard Jesus' perception on it. Huh? Your perception is your reality. Huh? But I love Jesus huh? because I'd rather listen to what he has to say about it huh? than even trust my own judgment. Huh? The Bible says huh? that Jesus said to them, huh? she's not dead. Well, if she ain't dead, what is she? She's not dead. She's just sleep. She is sleep. A temporary state of unconsciousness. Everything is still working. She's just in a rested condition. She's in a rested position. The brain activity has slowed down long enough for her to get some rest. She's in a position where now whatever was wrong in her body I put her in a place where she could rest. And in rest you know in your human experience when your body rests the cells repair themselves. Your body functions take a break so they can come back the next morning full of energy, bigger and vitality. And Jesus said, she's just sleep. Come on, Jarvis. Let's ride off into the sunset now. But the Bible says, when Jesus told them that she's sleep, they laughed at him. They ridiculed him. They snickered at him. They had the nerve, the mitigated gall, to amen, poke fun at him and say he crazy. He out of his mind. You know what I found out? When you hang around carnal people, when you hang around fleshly people, they never see things through the eyes of the spirit. It is always about them. You know when you're in a carnal environment where everything is about them, 
everybody's against them and everything is done against them have you ever ran into some people it's always about them hallelujah and the bible says jesus did not try to convince him he did not try to convince them of who he was and what he was going to do i came to announce to somebody tonight stop trying to convince people of who you are stop wasting energy trying to peep amen please people huh, and get them to validate huh, who you are huh. it's been 40 years now huh. i ain't new to this i'm true to this huh. and after 40 years i think i've earned the right to say huh, i'm not asking anybody huh, if i am a soldier huh. we used to sing a song in the church down there huh. do you huh, think i'll make a soldier I stopped singing that cause after all I've been through I don't care what you think I know that I am a soldier and I got the scars to prove it why don't you look at your neighbor and say neighbor I know I have the scars to prove it I am a soldier I am a child of the living God. The Bible says that Jesus put them out. I know y'all want to be passive. And I know y'all don't want to hear the truth of the Bible. But the gospel said that Jesus put them out. I know you want to hold on to everybody. And you want to coddle everybody. But this may be the season for you to put them out. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all quiet now. I said, put them out. Put them out of your mind. Put them out of your circle. Put doubt out. Put fear out. Put depression out. Put anger out. Why y'all ain't preaching with me? Put bitterness out. Put resentment out. And I don't care what form it comes in. When you see it coming, say, listen. I need you if you're not going to bring me something that's going to benefit me. If you're not going to bring me intel that's going to lift me up, you got to go. I feel the spirit of Eveline coming on me. If you want to bring me something, bring me something I can use. But don't nobody bring me no bad news. Why don't y'all say, yeah, shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, I can't afford no negativity, can't afford to have no negative conversation. If you ain't going to talk about how God can bring us out, then we ain't got nothing to talk about. Don't tell me who's sleeping with who. Don't tell me who's going with who. Don't tell me who's broke up with who. Don't tell me what somebody got on. Don't tell me what they bought. Don't want to hear it. Because it ain't doing nothing for my situation. I need, I need God to move on my behalf. And talking about somebody else ain't going to get them to move. I might as well go ahead and say what I feel like. it. Some of y'all are in this place because you won't shut your mouth and keep your spirit off somebody else. And God is saying, I don't know if you even want to be out because you keep talking dead things and you keep talking about stuff that I'm trying to get you out of. He put them all out. You got to go. Leave all that crying outside. I need faith in this house. I want y'all to go home. And you that are home, I need you to open your mouth and say, Doubt, open the door, y'all. Go to your door and just hold it open and say, Every demon, you are out. You are cast out. I'm evicting you right now. I said evict them. They've been living with you. You've been letting them sit on your couch. Can't watch TV in peace. Because they sitting on your couch. 
you going to bed huh? and they pulling the covers on the other side huh? crawling up in the bed with you huh? and you got sleepless nights huh? and your mind is restless huh? and you can't even get a good night's sleep huh? but the devil is a liar huh? your instructions tonight huh? is to pull them pull them out huh? yeah I said put him put him out look at your neighbor and say what you gonna do now go ahead and answer them I said go ahead and answer them I'm gonna put them out I ain't talking about your physical house either take your phone and delete them y'all ain't helping me hallelujah do like something happened here do like amen somebody did to me yeah huh. hallelujah huh. delete them huh. off of your Facebook huh. delete them off of social media huh. block them huh. can't see what they doing huh. can't see what you doing huh. and after a while huh, they'll be deleted out your mind huh. you got to remember their name huh. y'all ain't gonna help me you're going to have to remember their name because huh? God has a way huh? of erasing huh? every memory huh? that does not amen, help you huh? for where you're going. Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? The Bible says huh? that he huh? put him out. Huh? I need to tell y'all, huh? stop entertaining people huh? that ridicule huh? disregard huh? and disrespect huh? the anointing on your life huh? make up in your mind huh? you ain't got to believe huh? that the hand of the Lord is on me huh? but I know huh? that he huh? laid his hands huh? on me huh? look at your neighbor huh? and say hey neighbor one thing I know huh? that he huh? laid his hands huh, on me huh. that's why i'm still making it huh. that's why i'm still functioning because huh. he laid huh, his hand huh. yeah huh. his hand huh, of mercy huh. his hand huh, of grace huh. his hand huh, of power huh. his hand huh, of love huh. his hand huh, of peace huh. yeah. He laid his hand on me. Now let me go back to the verse that arrested my attention. The Bible says that Jesus told the people, she's not dead. She's sleep. I said, Lord, what you want me to tell your people tonight? Tell them it's not as bad as it looks. I know it looks bad. A few weeks ago, a man, Elder Barbara, was on her way home from work. And she had to call somebody because she could not put her foot on the gas pedal. And she could not manipulate the brake. And she was nervous. What we came to find out later, she was in the stages of having a stroke. Hallelujah. Then the next day, it got worse. And progressively, it got worse. And so, she was in the bed, unable to move, couldn't hardly talk. I'm telling y'all what I know. Couldn't really talk. Looked pitiful. Scared me to death. I said, Lord, what is this? It looks like the end. A couple of times rushed back to the hospital. And I said, God, I'm not ready to preach nobody's funeral. It's not, y'all. I'm not ready. Amen. To come up with no eulogistic message. I ain't ready. He said, son. He reminded me of this this morning. He said, son, it's not as bad as it looks and I see her y'all sitting there but I see her standing with her hands up a few weeks ago she couldn't raise her hands a few weeks ago she couldn't stand up by herself she had a walker y'all ain't gonna help me 
she had a walker and we had to help her everywhere but the other day she told me she was cleaning up in her house she was washing her own clothes she even was cooking something cause it ain't as bad It ain't as bad as it looks. Do you hear me? Some of y'all under the sound of my boys, you've been through a season where you've been unemployed. No money coming in. Didn't know how you were going to make it. And it looked like you were going to lose everything. But just before you lost everything, Jesus stepped in and said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. That will make all things work out for your good. Do I have a witness here? I said, do I have a witness here? I need you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, I know it looks bad. I know it looks hard. I know it looks impossible. But God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he can do, he can do what no other power what no other power, what no other power, 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 Pull on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need to tell you something. I know it looks bad. I know it looks over, but it's not as bad as it looks. Cause late in the midnight hour, God is gonna turn it around. It's about to work in your favor. Yeah, but though you go through this, you're coming out, but they, hallelujah, that so in tears are gonna weep in joy. And you need to tell the devil, get your hands off my money. Get your hands off of my body. Get your hands out of my mind. Get your hands off of my family. Get your hands off of my ministry. Get your hands off of God's people. And no weapon. I said no weapon. I said no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue. I need y'all to get happy on this. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment. God's going to. You're going to condemn them. Stop worrying about getting back at people. God got a day for them. You just keep praising him. You just keep blessing him. You just keep doing what you've been told to do. And God is going to take care of all your enemies. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. I said, let God arise. Make them arise. Let them arise in your life and watch I said watch 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 God watch him work for you watch him bless you watch him resurrect you the girl was dead Jesus walked in the room and said to light the Kuma, get up. He told the girl, get up. I'm taking all of you by your hand tonight. And I'm telling you in the spirit, get up. Wipe your eyes. Get up. 
I know it was traumatic, but get up. You're not dead. You've just been asleep. You've been knocked out. You've had the wind knocked out of you. You've had, I hear in the spirit, you've had the wind knocked out of you. You've been left semi-unconscious, but you've got enough to get back up. You may not have nothing left but a holly, but if you get up on the holly, when you're coming up, the Luya is on the way. Say yes, say yes. You may not have nothing but a thank you, but if you keep telling them thank you, Jesus is going to come. I may not have my full dance yet. I may be going through a rough thing and I can't pick them up and put them down, but I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to shuffle. Y'all ain't missing. I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to shuffle till the strength comes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, shuffle till your strength comes back. Shuffle till your joy comes back. For they that wait on the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to praise him in this state because he's going to bring me out of this state. I need to ask y'all a question. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not neither grows weary for there is no certain of his understanding for he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases their strength even the youth shall faint and grow weary and the young man shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall 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 renew their strength they go mount up they go mount up they are going mount up they are going mount up Look at your neighbor. I got to give you up. My time is gone. Not really. I came for revival tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm on the rise. I've been down January, February. Something knocked me down. March. Thought I had the victory in April. Something pulled me back down. May came. I thought it was getting better. But I'm back down again. June came and knocked the wind out of me. Left me there for dead. But I feel, I feel, I feel like I'm on the rise. I feel like I'm on the rise. I don't know about you. 
but I know I gotta let y'all go you're not loose to this long church Woo! but I want you before I finish this message I want you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I think I got it now don't cry for me Argentina is not as bad as it looks and since it ain't bad as it looks I'm gonna praise him till it looks like what I want it to look like I'm gonna dance till I see victory I'm gonna shout till I see victory I'm gonna praise him till I see victory y'all ain't moving I'm gonna clap my hands I need y'all to dance like you believe it. Everybody. Listen, 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 y'all keep playing, man. Keep playing right there. There's got to be a victory that happens all over this place. And it's got to permeate the airwaves. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to do this together right here. I'm taking you by one of your hands. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care what look dead. Tell them, I don't care what looked dead. I don't care what you thought was over. As of tonight, take another look. Because as of tonight, you coming out of that thing. And the reason I know you're coming out, because I got your hand and I'm coming out. And when I come out, I'm bringing you with me. Now pull on him and praise him. Everybody, come on. Dance children. I said dance children. I said dance children. Everybody dance now. I said, praise him, clap your hands, open your mouth. It just turned for you. I shut that door to open a big door. Huh? Praise him, everybody, come on. I command you to be healed. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, he's going to manifest complete recovery. I heard him say complete recovery. Woo! Complete recovery. Oh, Shatamana Lava Hoshka. Hey, there it is. He said complete recovery. He said complete recovery. He said complete recovery. I speak to the pain in your knees. And I commanded to go in the name. In the name of I need y'all to praise him in here.
to the young man that's watching me right now. You've been contemplating. Shall I even go on with this? Because it don't seem like it makes any sense. The Holy Ghost said, change your plans. The Holy Ghost said, change your plans. You got way too much to live for. There's too much ahead of you. I know it's been terrible in the past, but there is too much ahead of you. And the Lord said, it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> we get ready to go in a minute, a few minutes. But I need tonight, right while we're doing this, the Holy Ghost says, if you would take 60 seconds and with your praise, change your perception. In this next, this next dance, it's dropping off for you. Listen to me. In this next praise that we give them in this room, and you at home do it too. The fear, the worry, the frustration, the anxiety is leaving you. Now, if you don't obey, you're going to be stuck in it. But I'm telling you right now, with everything you have, I need you to forget about who's around you. I need you to forget about what's around you. I need you to forget about what you heard, what you said, what you think. And I need you to go for broke. I need you to praise him like you have not praised him in a long time. Because hear this. This praise is breaking off of you. Everything that's been holding you. You've been working with, for God heavy. You love God, but you've been heavy. You've been waiting. Job. Economic situation. Physical health conditions. But tonight... I said tonight, somebody shout to me tonight. Matter of fact, let's make it right now. I need you to open your mouth and say right now, it's about to drop off me. Because as soon as I start dancing, I'm leaving it all on the floor. If you believe it, open your mouth and praise him. Do it now. I said praise him. Woo! I said praise him. It's dropping. Put some intensity in it. Put some intensity in your praise. Put some intensity in this praise. I said put some intensity in this one. You're going back to the doctor. And he's telling you what I saw, I don't, I don't see now. Come here, Sister Liz. Come here. I need my oil. Real quick. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. I need you all to make some noise. I need you to make some noise. Lift your hands all the way up. I don't care what they saw. I don't care what the diagnosis is. God said, I'm about to reverse this. I'm about to reverse this. He's reversing the decision. Can't get no COVID. It's too much anointing in here. <laughs> no COVID in here. I'm gonna touch these hands, and you're gonna feel the healing virtue of God. Now, now, I've been teaching something. I've been teaching something at the 10 for 10 prayer. I've been teaching something, and listen to me. I want you to get this in your spirit. 
And I don't know if you ever heard it before or you agree, but I need you to hear this in the Holy Ghost. We're not going to spend time asking God to heal us. I need y'all to say something back. No longer should you waste time asking God to heal you. It's insulting, hear this, to me as a parent, for me to provide something for my children, and then they turn around and ask me like I haven't given it to them. When he died on Calvary, according to Isaiah 53 and 5, and with his stripes, we are healed. What we are waiting on is the manifestation of what he's already done. So when I touch you, he's going to release the manifestation. How? Somebody. How? I need y'all to praise him like y'all believe it. I need y'all to praise him like you believe it. Woo. Come here, Beverly. Come here. Come here. Again, lift your hands up. Get that hand up. God says, lift that hand all the way up. Get that hand all the way up. Look, listen, listen to me. He says, look at your hand. I'm getting ready to restore that hand to that hand. But you've been operating in fear. So it ain't even about your hand. It's about your faith. But tonight, I cancel the spirit of fear in you. Worry and doubt. I come against the demon of doubt Amen. and the spirit of fear yes, and in the name of Jesus. Jesus. How? Hey. Open your mouth because there it is. Satan, your assignment on her mind is canceled. I speak the restoration of faith in the name of Jesus. Faith! Faith! <laughs> The Kuti Alabahai. I need y'all looking. I need you to praise. Y'all looking. I need you to praise God. It's done. It's done. I need you to praise. Listen, Beverly. Ain't nothing wrong with your legs. I need you to put your legs, put your feet up. Pick your feet up and praise them right now. That's right. Pick your feet up and praise. Somebody help her. I said, somebody help her. I said, somebody help her. Stop worrying, worrying how I'm the story. I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at bad things. I let go and I let God, let God have his way. It's not over. God 
says it's done, it's not over. Feel something. Wait a minute. Give me a one. Oh! Lift your hands up. Tonight, the Spirit of the Lord will say to you, what is, what is hindering your healing is that you have accepted. You are settling into a lifestyle that I have not created you to live in. You become sedentary in your faith. And you've settled, this is how it's going to be, and I'm going to struggle with this, and I'm going to, but tonight, but tonight, I rebuke that in you tonight. I come against it, and I snatch it out of you. I snatch the spirit of acceptance, of sickness, and it's really not in your body, it's in your mind. And I speak to the depression that is on your soul. You don't talk about it, but the heaviness of your soul has caused you to live in the heaviness of your body. And the sickness of your body. There is a depression that you can't talk about. Because you have a, it is assimilated into your personality and into your lifestyle. But tonight, tonight, Tonight you declare, I am not dead, I'm asleep. And tonight, I wake it up. Tonight, oh, shatabahaya. Kotalamandiyo siyanabaha. Mekoshiyatandeleba hindeleba hoshiyata. Zekundilabandir, zeketeleba hoshiyata. Sikikikikatamanaya. Ikatamanana mapete. Motel sheke, matandeleba dandeleba Wake up! I command you to wake up! I command I command your spirit to wake up! I command Every dormant place in your life, I command it to wake up. It's been sleep, but I command it to wake up. You've been sleep, but I command you to wake up. I need somebody in here to bless him. I command it, I command you to wake up. I command it to wake up. I command it to wake up. Come here, daughter. I don't know who you are. Come here, daughter. Come here. Come here. Come here. I need somebody to lift your hands and open your mouth up. Woo. Oh. Layers. I see layers. 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 Relational layers. I see family. Layers. Layers of hurt. Layers of bitterness. Anger. I was preaching about anger. I saw you. The Lord, the Lord brought you. Anger, hurt is deep. Is deep. And so you've given up. There's a part of you that's given up and said, This is how it's going to be. But the Lord sent you here tonight. The Lord sent you here tonight. Lift your hands up. I'm peeling the layers tonight, saith God. I'm peeling the layers. Now hear this, the instruction of the Lord, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Because hear me, when he peels these layers off, not only has he, he said to me, this is what he's saying to you, I'm peeling you, but I'm protecting you. 
don't know if this makes any sense to you. I'm going to peel it off, but you are safe. Y'all don't know when to respond. I'm peeling it off, but you're going to be safe. You're in a safe place for God to remove the layers. Woo. You will not be persecuted for it. You don't owe anybody an explanation. I'm peeling these layers, but I'm protecting you. And I'm not going to let the enemy come and get you. And what used to affect you is not going to affect you any longer because I'm peeling those layers off. So like an onion, I'm peeling you off, but I'm protecting you. Say it, God, lift your hands up and open your mouth. And for the first time, you're going to cry out to God. I want you to open your mouth and cry out to God. Because the more you cry out, you're coming up. And listen, there's something. Hmm. Yes, Lord. There's something that number 12 means to you. I don't know what that means. I don't know if you have a child. Is 12. I don't know what it is. But there's something significant about the number 12. I ain't seeing it. Anything? Huh? Say it again. Okay. Okay. 12 year old daughter. Okay. 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 So, so, so. And that, those, that 12 year old daughter is associated to a 12 year old pain that you've been carrying. Yeah. That's why the Lord directed this message. He knew you would be here. But that 12-year-old issue is over tonight. Amen. That 12-year-old issue is over. And for the first time, you're going to be free from that anger, the hurt of that. <sighs> and listen, when you go home and hug your 12-year-old daughter, I don't know if you notice or not, but the daughter, the, the girl in the scriptures, she was 12. How? Oh! Thank you for doing it now. Thank you for doing How? Thank you for doing it now. I need somebody to praise them right now. The issue. Hit Katabo. Yana. Here it is. I need somebody to bless him. God don't lie. God don't lie. He don't play. He don't play. Everybody praise him now. Oh! We're getting ready to go, but you're going to praise him now. All right, we got to go. Come here, Mama Eva. Come here, Mama Eva. Come here. Come here. Lift your hands up. I'm tired of seeing you walking in this stiffness. I'm tired of seeing this on my watch. Not when I know the God we serve. He's a miracle worker. And I don't care what the doctor said. Drina, put your hand on her neck, the back of her neck. I decree and declare by his stripes manifested now in the name how the fire of God touch you from the crown of your head to the sole of the feet and it and it loosens it shall out oh, it shall loosen every joint every ligament you shall gain full motion in the name somebody help her I need y'all to dance. I need y'all to praise him. The notable miracle. Minister Pat Duggins, the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you Tell them to go and look again. Because what they saw will not be there. I decree and declare that that spot shall be dissolved. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that spot. 
I see the blood erasing it right now. I see the blood of Jesus erase. Oh, shut up. I need somebody to praise him in here for the blood working there. Gotta release you. With everything in you, I need you to open your mouth and shout. It is already looking better. will be greater than your past. I don't play with prophecy and I don't say things for effect. Don't need to do that. And I'm clear the difference between a word of knowledge and a word of foretelling prophecy. And I speak this by the Holy Ghost and by the permission of God. The next six months of your life, you shall see what the first six months was all about. Hey! Yes, sir. I said the next six months of this year, you're going to, God is going to fill in the blanks. And you're going to see why. You're going to see why. You're going to see why. And I need you to do one thing for me. Don't give up. How? How? The one thing I need you to do is hold on. He coming. How? I said he coming. Clap your hands and say it. Clap your hands and say he coming. But you don't. Don't give up. Not through here. Oh. Ina na 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 kosia. Hola mama ndia. Sata. Hey anda sia. Hosia tabaha. Hola mama ndia sekala bohosia. Anda sata ke la mosia. Ila na 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 boho. Zeke tala bohosia. Si anda la la ndia osia. Ota mama bandia osia. He's going to make it clear to you. He can't tell mama bohosia. I did not know Kosiata. He gonna make it clear. Ho! Ho! He gonna make it clear. He's gonna make it clear. He's gonna make it clear. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, Mama Nashia. It's gonna make sense in a minute. It's all gonna make sense. It's gonna make sense. Oh God, my spirit is still flying. I could do this all week, I promise you. I almost feel like it. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the spirit of revival. I told you Sunday the Lord is going to revive his work. He's going to revive his work. Woo, he's going to wake up that thing in you again. He's going to work up, he's going to wake up that anointing in you again. That prayer wheel is about to turn again. Somebody catch it. I said, come on, catch it in the Holy Ghost. He's going to wake up that thing in you. Your creativity is about to wake up again. Your faith is about to be stirred again. Oh, sir. 
Yes, yes, yes. D, lift your hands up. Oh, come here, come here, come here, daughter, come here. Your creativity ain't dead, it's sleep. But get ready to hear what you have never heard before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Get ready to hear. I, I wake up the spirit of creativity. God's lyrics are about to flood your soul. I need you to praise him like you don't normally praise him. I need you to open your mouth and holler. I need you to open your how? Oh! I need you to open your mouth and holler. I need you to praise him right now. New lyrics is give you songs in the night. Hey, these songs are gonna stick. I don't care what didn't work before. This one is gonna stick. It's born out of a new place. It's born out of. your hands up everybody we're going to move like this aye 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 a flat let's go there aye aye Aye, 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 aye. Now that, that simply means in Guyana, is there's no really words to describe what God has done. So when the Guyanese, Guyanese get to praising God, that's what they say. They say, aye, aye, aye. Aye, 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 oh, aye, 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 come on, aye. Come on, get it in your spirit. Everybody, live your voice and say. No words to describe this move of God. So I simply lift my voice and say, I am. Everybody say, I am. Listen, 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 listen. I want all of you under the sound of my voice, those who are online and those of you who are in here. Glory. I told you Sunday, I told you Sunday that you're going to see a complete turnaround in 60 days. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, I've already received testimonies. Pastor, it wasn't 60 days. It was less than 60 hours. I'm telling you, God don't lie. I ain't got to make stuff up when God don't lie. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are believing God for a turnaround right now? My health, my wealth, everything about my life is about to turn around. 
That's why you can't afford, listen to me, and I want to say this, and I want you to hear this clearly. You can't afford, when there's an opportunity to sow, you can't afford not to sow. Do you hear me? You can't afford not to sow, because that seed may be the seed that turns things around. Do you hear what I'm saying? I need y'all to holler, amen, something. I need you to stay engaged in this. I'm telling you right now what I've seen with my own eyes and what I've heard with my own ears. One seed can change your whole life. I speak to businesses right now. And out of your obedience in the sowing, God's going to bless your business. Now, now, this is why this message is so important tonight. Because according to the economic forecast, where this inflation is through the roof, everything is ridiculous. I've never seen chicken wings that cost that much. Come on. Everything costs that much. Every time I pull up, hear me, I pulled up to the pump in Florence. Hear this, I pulled up to the pump in Florence, South Carolina on Saturday and I put $126 in my car. By the time church was over Sunday, I had to put another $115 in my car. Is that right? Was it 115 I think. Yeah, $115. In less than 24 hours, I had placed $100, no, $240 in my gas tank. I need a bike. <laughs> I need a bike. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I need an electric car, y'all. <laughs> I'm giving me an electric car. But hear me, hear me. Hear this, in less than 24 hours, I put, or, or a little more 24 hours, I put, and this is all ministry stuff. I ain't been nowhere for leisure. This is all just doing the work of the Lord. That's it. That's all I've been doing. $240. Mm -hmm. This is what I did. But you know what? God keeps supplying it. I don't even know if I have what I have. All I know is every time I put my hand in the bow, all I know, all I know, I need somebody in here to shout every time. Every time I put my hand in the meal barrel, meal comes out. And I want to say this over your life tonight. You think you're being safe by not tithing and not giving? But you are really putting yourself in jeopardy when you don't do it. You're not playing it safe. You're playing without faith. I'm telling you right now what I know about the Spirit of God. And I'm not talking about just tonight, but make up in your mind. I'm going to put God in a position where he has to take care of me. Let me tell you what I know about my wife. Tell you what I know about my wife. There's a confidence she has that if she spends her money, she comes to me and says, Jimmy, I need. She goes ahead and makes financial commitments to stuff without telling me. And I hear her say stuff like, oh yeah, we're gonna give you that. We we're gonna do that. Don't prob no problem. And I'm looking at her like. Then she'll say stuff like, I paid this, and I took care of them, and I did this, and I did that. And I said, okay, I didn't ask you to do it. But she... <laughs> Hear this. She never believes that even if I have not signed off on this purchase, even if I have not authorized this purchase, she believes something in her, I think it's twisted, but some in her believes that she's going to get whatever she spent back from me. And the reason why she feels like that is because every time I do it. Almost every time. Almost. But here's this. Here's the point I want to make. If she can have that confidence in me, and, I, and she don't even know how much money I got or don't have. And I be saying, oh, God, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. And I got to figure out how to get it. And I go to figuring out. 
shouldn't I have, shouldn't we have more confidence in a God that has everything? I need you to tell your neighbor, spend your money on God's business and make God take care of you. Kingdom life, we have a need so huge. Let me tell you this. We have a need so huge right now that it's going to take God. I'm not going to even tell y'all what the need is. But it's so big that if God don't do it, my prayer to him is if you don't do it, you don't want it. Because if it's his will, it's his bill. And I decree and declare that he's going to open every last door. I said he's going to open every last door and I speak favor in the name of Jesus. What we need right now is bigger than if everybody, well, I don't know, some of y'all are rich. But, um, but, but it, 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 it don't even make no sense to me asking you. Because this is bigger than us. It's God. But guess what? He specializes. I want all of you that will sow. Listen to me tonight. I want, a, I want at least a thousand of you to do this. <laughs> but I want every last one of you that was so $40, I want you to get it in your hand right now. Get it in your whatever, whatever device prompts are on the screen. But I want you to sow $40 tonight. I didn't ask for a lot of money. But I'm believing God tonight for you to sow this $40. Now, some of you, God is touching your heart. So, some of you, God is touching your heart to give them even more. But I, you know what? If everybody did this under the sound of my voice, and if we made a concerted effort where God sees the faith of his people, and I want to see your, your phones if you're doing it. I want to see if you're giving my phone. I want to raise your phone. Say, I'm doing this. I'm in this. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Thank you. If you're giving it physical money, Deacon Kanad is there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've held you. Amen. And we're going. Stand to your feet, everybody. We're going. Father, thank you for every gift. Thank you for every giver tonight. Thank you for every seed sown. May it be multiplied a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. And God, we are sowing this seed because it's going to meet the need. And we believe you by faith in an unusual way. Give us favor. With every conversation we have, give us favor right now. And we speak it in the name of Jesus. It is so. So it is. Amen and amen. Now unto him is able to keep you from falling, present your faultless before this pres his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, the glory, dominion, power, and forever. Every glad heart say amen. Now can you greet each other? The Lord bless you, everybody online. I pray that you are sowing tonight. Sow with us. The Lord bless you. Thank you for hanging in there with us. And I pray that you were blessed. And remember, it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs>